My guest today is Mr. Stephen Werges, owner and operator of Steinway and Son Piano Gallery in Mayflower, Arkansas. And he brought a guest, Eric Cheshire from Infrared Studio Productions, who is also connected to your gallery. Yes, he's the, uh, he's the store manager there. All right. Uh, Stephen is more than just a piano tuner, besides being the only certified Steinway pio- piano, piano, okay. Besides <laughs> being the only s- certified Steinway piano dealer in the state, he is one of only 60 Steinway dealers in the world. Two decades ago, Stephen met and began working alongside a man that would change the tra- trajectory of his life. The man was the well-respected and knowledgeable Mr. Jim McGee, owner of Piano Craft in Little Rock, Arkansas. Mr. McGee was a Scandinavian immigrant and a piano expert. As a teacher, he trained at the Steinway Park Royal London Workshop. His skills were such that he taught at the European Piano Technician Guild National Convention and was the tuner technician for the Royal Danish Orchestra and Music Conservatory, before moving to Arkansas. As an apprentice to Jim, Stephen learned how to regulate, rebuild, and the art of moving and tuning pianos from one of the best. In 2010, Stephen became co-owner in Piano Craft and today is sole proprietor of his own business, Stephen's Piano Shop, and in 2019, opened the only Steinway and Sons Piano Gallery in Arkansas. It is with great pleasure I welcome to the table the well-trained, exclusive Steinway piano dealer, tuner, craftsman, and artisan, Mr. Stephen Werges, and his co-partner, partner in crime, Eric Cheshire, Infrared Studios Production Business Associate. Let's call it, let's call you that. Perfect. Welcome, guys. Thank, thank you thank for you. having us. Yeah, thank you. So online, Stephen, you don't talk much about your piano playing you talk mostly about your craftsmanship well um my piano playing skills are uh, i get to hear some of the best so you know i i don't think i'm very good (laughs) not worth talking about really but i do i do enjoy playing the piano and uh, i started playing piano before i started working on them started playing piano yeah i was gonna say which came first uh started playing when i was about 15 years old and uh started learning by ear and your start- parents play piano yeah my mom does and you had it in your house yes um so you started playing the piano yeah and how did you so you how did you come to work at piano craft where you just was it just happenstance or did you want to learn about the mechanism of the piano well um i'm actually i was a mechanic i was working on cars and rebuilding oh. motors and that's what my dad did and uh, he was a mechanic and an engineer and a machinist. And uh, that's really what interested me is all the moving parts in a piano. There's like 10,000 moving parts in a grand piano. So I was very interested in how mechanisms work. And I wanted to learn how to put pianos together and rebuild them. And that was really my main interest. I came into it wanting to rebuild pianos. I didn't have any interest in tuning pianos. Uh, but Jim McGee, when I was hired there, told me I'd have to do both of them. That you can't do one or the other. So you have a good ear? I have a decent ear. I have Look, a trained good ear. Your friend Eric's nodding. Yeah. <laughs> he has a very good ear. So you came to work there thinking you were going to learn the mechanics of the piano. You'd been playing as a musician in your home for fun. Yeah. And about three years. Yeah. And you were so, so if you started when you were 15, you must have been about 18 when you went to work there. Yeah. I was 17, 17 and a half when I started working. Uh, for Jim as an apprentice. I actually had to work for him for free the first couple of weeks to get him to even hire me. But People don't understand that. <laughs> That's a lost, lost art today. They the don't understand that. Yes. And the drive to be willing to do that. It's amazing. There's so many people that I mentor that say, well, I'm not going to take that job because of some ego. And you're like, That's an opportunity you're going to miss to learn something or to prove yourself or to move up. Warren Buffett said when he was talking to a bunch of um, MBA students at Harvard, they said, how do you get a job when you graduate from where you want to at a place you want to work? And he said, pick out a company, which is what you've done, what you did, Steve, pick out a company you want to work at 
and then get a job that fits with, fits with your lifestyle and, and your the way you think about things that aligns with your with your values and then get a job there even if you're the janitor get your foot in the door and then work your way up and prove yourself find a mentor and, and in your case, find a mentor. And that's what you did. I hope if any young people listen that they're thinking, just find a place you like, get in there and prove yourself. Um, so let's talk about Jim McGee, your mentor. He worked for 20 successful years in Scandinavia yeah, in the business of pianos. And so I assume he's an immigrant to America. No, actually, he uh, was born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, he went to school in Texas uh, under... I'm trying to remember the name of the school where he learned how to tune pianos and uh, start working on them. And then he moved over to uh, London and trained with Steinway there and then moved over to Denmark, Copenhagen and uh, took care of the Royal Danish Conservatory there and had a rebuilding shop where he rebuilt Steinways there also for 20 years. Then he came back here to the States and uh, around 99, uh, 98, around that year, he came back to Little Rock and started piano craft. Wow. That's a big life. Yeah. Um, and now he's actually helping me a little bit here. Oh, is he still alive? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, yeah. he uh, he became a Steinway uh, dealer up in uh, Kentucky. And then... Oh, he moved again. Yeah, he moved again. And now he just moved back uh, about a year ago, and he is, uh, he is helping me. Do you know why he came back the first time? No? No. And then he stayed here? And yeah. he sold you piano craft, I guess, in 2010? Yeah, it's actually kind of a long story, but he, he brought a business partner in uh, probably six or seven years after I'd already been there, and uh, maybe 10, I can't remember, but he brought a business partner in, and then he actually sold his business to his business partner, and then his business partner offered me half of the business, and I bought it, <laughs> <laughs> and then we split the business, and I started Steven's Piano Shop. So, Eric, when he went to work for free for this guy, he had no idea he was going to end up owning the shop by the, in ten, within 10 years. That's a great story. So, as an apprentice, you learned tuning, yes. which you weren't really interested in, but he said you had to learn it. Yeah, I couldn't have done any of this without tuning. What does it say when you said on your website, voice? What Voicing is, uh, so tuning corrects the pitch of a piano. You know, it kind of, it just makes a piano sound in tune, I guess. I mean, no better way of putting it uh, without getting too technical, but mm -hmm. voicing is the actual voice of the piano, uh, whether it's warm, whether it's bright, dark, round, sharp, um, all the different uh, colors that you hear in the piano, how to release the colors in a piano and get more overtones and get the hammers to fit the strings and hit them all just right at the same time. That's why you hear some pianos and they sound pretty to you and you hear other pianos and they just grate on your middle yeah. nerve. And they might be... In perfect tune. Both of them could be in perfect tune, but then some of them just sound... It's the voice. Yeah, it's There's the a voice real artistry piano. to that. Uh, one of the highest paid trained person in a piano shop in a place that builds pianos is the person that they entrust to give the voice to that piano. So can any piano have any voice or is it just an upright sounds one way, a great grand sounds another, mm -hmm. a spinet sounds one way? A lot depends on the piano. Uh, with a piano like a Steinway, uh, the opportunities are endless. You can literally tailor that piano to what you want with some other pianos whether you know even though they're very good pianos you could be limited it depends on how they make the hammers and the chemicals that might be used in the felts you might be limited there uh, we might be able to make it a little brighter or a little darker sounding but with a steinway we can sit down and lay the color palette out and say what do you want yeah so in the movie the green book where the guy said i'll only play on a steinway yes. piano he could go anywhere to play on Steinway, and it doesn't mean that it's going to have the same voice, though. So. Exactly. So when people say to me about Dreamland Ballroom, you need to get a piano up here, I'm always like, well, how do I know what kind of piano the artist is going to want? That seems like a risky thing to do. Here's a simple fact that I tell everybody that comes to the gallery. Approximately 98% of the world's artists that play piano for a living play Steinway pianos, and Steinway's never paid a single one of them to do it. So you have comfort as an artist that even though this Steinway might be different than this other Steinway, the touch, the basics that make Steinway Steinway that are going to be tone. there. Yeah. Yes. And depending then on how you play it 
it's going to give you back what you want. And no other piano on the planet can do that. And that's, so I, I guess the keys always feel the same on a Steinway. Within which, reason. Which would make it to me like every time you go to a new piano, you're like, oh, the keys have got more or stiffer or not. It kind of depends on also who's who's been taking care of the piano. Yeah. You know? So you tune them. You've learned. So we've learned about voice. What's regulate mean? All right. So regulation is what the whole reason I really got into pianos was learning the mechanics and how they, you know, how to adjust them and make them feel the certain way that they do. And there's about, like I said, there's 10,000 moving parts in a piano. I read where Steinway had 21,000. There might be 21,000 parts, but there's 10,000 moving parts. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. okay. So in the moving parts, there's about uh, between 20, maybe 22 different adjustments on each individual 88 notes. So, and they, the adjustments have to work together with the rest of the 88 notes a lot of times. So that is regulating, is adjusting all of those different adjustments on each individual note and as a whole sometimes. Re so that sounds like, so then rebuilding would be what? Rebuilding would be uh, taking the piano down to just the bare wood back to, you know, just a, a soundboard or just the frame, the outside of the piano, the frame, the case. And then putting all new material in it, like a new soundboard, a uh, new bridge, and new action parts, and which regulating comes later in the rebuilding process. Once you have everything put in there, now you've got to make it all work. You know, you've got to make it all work together. So that's the real challenge in rebuilding. You know, we can always put everything in there and measure it and just get it just right, but then we've got to make it sound good and make it work right. And on your website, you call the art of moving pianos why do you call it the art it is an art <laughs> it, is. it just seems like you need to be strong to me yeah, and you have do a need good to be dolly strong. <laughs> strong and a good dolly and uh yeah you've really got to really got to be careful with it though just actually <laughs> moving when jim hired me you know mm -hmm. i couldn't really do much i couldn't really regulate or voice or make him any money but you're <laughs> a 17 year old strong back yeah so he basically he would get crates of pianos in and he taught me how to uncrate them and set them up. You know, they come, a grand piano comes in on its side and fits through a, it could fit through a two foot door. Uh, then you have to take it, you know, take everything out of the box and put the legs on it and then set it up and put the pedal liar on it. And yeah. And that's part of moving. That's setting them up. And then also he would have me move pianos that he sold to people. You know, no, pian tuning pianos seems like a mysterious business to me like subjective based on your ear well tuning you know there's a universal pitch that every every instrument is tuned to like when you're is listening there? to the radio everything is at a440 and that means that the a4 on the octave scale is beating 440 times per second and that's what makes an a4 so everything is tuned off of that a and uh, for it to sound, you know, good with other instruments. So you do have something you have to start with. And then with pianos, you do have different temperaments and stuff that you can get into and it can get really technical and confusing and, you know, might confuse myself talking about it, but. <laughs> you look, you're looking like, I'm going to confuse this girl yeah. speaking about me. <laughs> you're kind of like, don't tell her too much. She's going to yeah. glaze over. Can I explain it? Yes. It would be as if, Everyone in the world who speaks a different language, English, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, they were all forced to stand in a choir without learning anybody else's language and everybody sing the same song at the same time. It would sound ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. But if everybody learned Japanese or if everybody in the choir knows English and now they say sing the song, everybody is speaking the same language. And that's what A440 is. It's that universal note that all instruments are tuned to. So no matter if you're playing the piano with a cello or the piano, or I record a piano piece in, in Little Rock and I send it to Nashville, when they sit down and they tune their instruments and they play along to my piano part, it's in tune. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Yes. You, you notice that, have you ever been to the, uh, the symphony when yeah. they have a, a concerto, like an artist come in and play in the piano for concerto? play uh a4 he'll play go up there and play one note 
and then the rest of the symphony tunes all of their instruments to that one note. And that's what they usually go up but there. But they don't call that note an A4. Or uh, they, they, do? don't, they don't say anything. They just walk up there and play it. That's the one I note. I thought it was always, always a C. It's an A. It's an A. It's an A. It's an A4. Yeah. And it's actually, that's the one note I'm always, always concerned about when I'm tuning for the symphony because I know that that note will be singled out for everybody to hear. And there's three strings that are on that, that uh, make that note up and they all have to be tuned perfectly together. If and they're not, they're going to go, that's Stephen. Yeah. yeah. That's Stephen got to tune that piano. <laughs> that's Stephen got to do that. All right. This is a great place to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with the well-trained, exclusive Steinway piano dealer, tuner, craftsman, and artisan, Mr. Steve Worges, and his business partner, Eric Cheshire, Infrared Studio Productions. We'll be back after the break. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagAndBanner.com. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, the business has grown and changed, along with Carrie's experience and leadership knowledge. In 1995, she launched the business website FlagAndBanner.com, became an early blogger in 2004, founded the nonprofit Friends of Dreamland Ballroom in 2009, began distributing a biannual publication called Brave Magazine in 2014, and today she's branched out into this very radio show, YouTube channel, and podcast, where each week you'll hear her engage in candid conversations with engaging persons. Stay informed about upcoming guests by subscribing to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy's YouTube channel. For updates of happenings on the busyflagandbanner.com campus, i.e. Dreamland Ballroom events, current Up In Your Business guests, sales at flagandbanner.com, relevant Brave magazine articles, and Carrie's weekly blog post, join our email list at flagandbanner.com and receive our Thursday, very popular, all-inclusive, water cooler weekly update. Telling American-made stories, selling American-made flags. The flagandbanner.com. Back to you, Carrie. Thanks, Gray. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with piano experts, Mr. Steve Worges, founder of Stevens Piano Shop. Is that still around? Yes. Piano Shop and Steinway and Sons Piano Gallery in Mayflower, Arkansas, and Eric Shesher, his, uh, it's not really your business partner. What would you call yourself? I uh, guess I'm the store manager. Oh, yeah, I asked you that already, I guess. didn't I? Kind and I'm of. The you're not at really, the but you're also yeah. the Infrared Studio Productions, when which we, is yours, right? Uh, yes, my uh, Rex Bell uh, owns the uh, studio, and I'm the uh, producer there. Okay, for yeah. Infrared Studio Productions. Yes. All right. Uh, before the break, we talked about um, you going to work at Piano Craft as an apprentice, mm-hmm. and within ten years, you were co-owner of it, um, and about all the different ways you tune and voice and what was the other word we what was regulate it? regulate mm-hmm. pianos so we all learned something um but in 2010 like we said you became the co-owner of piano craft and head technician but when i was researching all this there's another company online who claims to be formerly piano craft and they say they were founded in 2003 i'm confused yeah. What does that mean? So, uh, depending on what company that was, it might have been. Uh, what was the name of it? Uh, I don't remember. Go ahead. Maybe McGee Piano. That could possibly be it. That's that's Jim. Jim after he left. No, it wasn't McGee Piano. Uh, it was. Um, oh, piano tuning. And, yeah. Piano tuning and moving yeah. in Little yeah. Rock. Yeah. Yes. So that is uh, my old business partner. Oh, so okay. after after we. So Part- three businesses have springboarded from piano craft. Yes. I yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So how did you end up leaving piano craft if you and your business partner were together? Yeah. So, um, so I was running all the service in the, in piano craft and he was doing all the sales. I didn't really have any interest in retail. Mm-hmm. This was a technician, loved tuning, loved rebuilding, wanted nothing to do with selling pianos. Um, I enjoyed just working on them. Uh, so we just, came to the conclusion that it would be best if I had my own uh, service department, my own service company, and he car- carried on with Piano Craft and kept doing uh, the sales. Well, he changed the name. Yeah, he. that's after Piano Craft went out of business. So he, that was back in 2011, 2012 when I left Piano Craft. 
And then he continued on with piano craft for four or five years. And then uh, piano craft went out of business and he, and he started another company. So, Well, you got out just in the nick of time. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not selling pianos now? Oh, I am. I am. I mean, you know, life changes. I, I told him when I left piano craft that, you know, I will never sell pianos. That's just, that's just not ha, in the cards. Ha, ha, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> never say never, right? Yeah. And that's what he said to me when I called and told him that I was uh, going to work with Steinway. He said, so, you know, I thought you weren't ever going to sell pianos. People change. Yeah. That's what I told him. <laughs> in 2012, you began your own business adventure called Stevens Piano Shop that we were just talking about. And you just explained how that leap came between you and your business partner. Um, and you have some very exclusive clients. You have uh, Arkansas Symphony Orchestra, University of Arkansas at Little Rock, University of Central Arkansas. Um, but you still decided, and you had all of those before 2016. And in 2016, you decided you wanted more training, and this time with Steinway. What prompted the need to get more learning? Uh, well, at the time, I had just started working with UCA. And UCA is in a, uh, they are becoming an all Steinway school which means that they're going to have all Steinways and they need them kept up by a Steinway technician, someone who's trained by Steinway. I saw that coming. I saw that they would have all Steinways in a few years. And I saw the opportunity as their technician to get my foot in the door and be able to go to New York and do training. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you're, if you're a technician, you can't just call Steinway up and say, Hey, you know, I want to, want to come do some training up there in New York under your head techs. Uh, you have to be suggested, you know, uh, you have recommended. to be re yeah, recommended by another Steinway dealer. And at the time I was working with a uh, Steinway dealer out of Memphis who was working with UCA and they knew I was going to be the technician for UCA. And, uh, so they, they were able to secure me a spot in, in a training program up in New York. So now I guess you're, you're not working with Memphis anymore. No, no, I'm not. Um, so I, I trained in New York with uh, their head tech there, Kent Webb. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, the training was actually, it was really fun, actually. I loved it. Uh, and actually, since Jim taught me everything that he had learned from Steinway in London, it was almost like I was just doing a repeat of my apprenticeship. Uh, he, they were teaching me the exact same stuff. So, uh, and a fresher I had, course. Yeah, I was ahead of the game when I came in there. So, well, it was nice to be yeah. the top student, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Teacher's pet. <laughs> Teacher's pet. Yeah. So then you come back, and I guess because of that training, that was part, yeah, part you, of it. Yeah. I guess because of that, in 2017, Steinway, uh, um, well, then you, Steinway asked you if you wanted to be an exclusive dealer. Yes. Yes. You so think it's because of that training? It was partly because of that. Yes. Yeah. It was, uh, I was able to meet quite a few people up there in the offices at Steinway when I was there. Can anybody sell a Steinway, but only some people are specified? <laughs> or do you have to be the only dealer that can sell a Steinway? The better question is, anyone can sell a piano mm -hmm. um, if you're a decent salesperson. Um, but to sell a Steinway is an exclusive years of knowledge based thing because you're asking, let's say it's parents of a young child, you're asking them to take a big financial leap uh, and have a lot of faith that this is something that'll be a part of their family forever. Uh, a Steinway is rarely an instrument that someone dips their toe in. You know, they might have a child who's taken piano lessons for a year. Um, Steinway is a big financial purchase for most families. And, um, so don't buy it for your kid and if he's, if he's just starting. Well, out. no, but you need to talk to no, someone. No, definitely buy it for your kid. Definitely buy it for your kid. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is <laughs> when you, it's kind of the difference between selling a Lamborghini or maybe selling a Honda. Yeah. You know, um, a basic good salesperson can sell a Honda, but when someone's shopping for a Lamborghini, uh, the person standing in front of them better have the experience and the knowledge. So when it says them. I'm an exclusive Steinway dealer, it doesn't mean there's not somebody else in the state selling a Steinway. Well, no, actually, yeah, to yes, that it question, does. it does. Yes, yes, yeah. You can't, uh, you can't call up Steinway and order pianos and sell them. And nobody else is allowed to sell a new Steinway out of their showroom but you. That's right. So you started a uh, you you started or you opened a six thousand square foot shop. Yes. 
Yeah, so we... What do you call that? Is that your Stevens? That was Stevens Piano, piano Shop, studio? yeah, where we were uh, rebuilding pianos, and I was selling used uh, rebuilt Steinways and rebuilt Baldwins and rebuilt Mason and Hamlins, all the other brands and the good brands that we were rebuilding there. Uh, and we still do rebuild pianos there. We still do a lot of work on pianos there. Is that where the gallery, the the uh, the gallery is? You call it the Steinway Piano Gallery in Little Rock. So that's a different location now. So I started. I was going to say, how can you be <laughs> in Mayflower and have a have a have a gallery called Steinway Piano Gallery Little Rock? Well, uh, I busted him out, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, about that. So <laughs> about that. I'm leaving you alone on this that. This is one, a Mr. good Steve. story, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, when I talked to Steinway about becoming a Steinway Piano Gallery. Yeah, uh, which there's one, uh, you know, there's only 60 piano Steinway piano galleries in the world. There are, you know, 60 plus Steinway dealers in the United States, but they're not all Steinway piano galleries. There's a there's a difference in the two. Um, so say that again one more time. All right. So there's 60 Steinway piano galleries in the world. OK. All right. Uh, but there are a, a lot more than 60 Steinway dealers in the world. I could be Steven's piano shop and an exclusive Steinway dealer. Does that make sense? To be able to have the Steinway name and call the business Steinway in piano. Your, in your name. Yes. Makes you special. Yes, ma'am. Yes. To be able to actually have their name as the company name is a, you know. Is but you a, said any nobody else could sell Steinways in, in Arkansas but him. New Steinways. Oh, I get you. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I could have, I've could have. When we were working it out and I was becoming a Steinway dealer, I could have left it at Stevens Piano Shop or something like that. But uh, but then you'd miss that name. Yeah, I'd miss that name. And I didn't really know it was a, a big a deal as it was. A big to honor. actually, Yeah, a big honor and just a blessing to be able to call my company Steinway Piano Gallery. I didn't know that they didn't freely give that away. They don't. Uh, I asked if I could have that name and uh, they only give it to you know someone who they're going to trust to you know, represent their name, right. represent their name as their store. You know, that store is, uh, has Steinway's name on it. Only so. 60 people would get that name. Yeah. That's a big deal. So how did it end up with Little Rock in the end of, in the name right, and so, you're in Mayflower? Yeah. So to have a Steinway name, you know, we really needed to have it with the, it's usually like Steinway Piano Gallery, Nashville or oh, Steinway so, Piano Gallery. So it shows uh, the geography of where it is. Yeah. That's and right. it needed to be in the, had had to have the uh i guess the largest metropolitan area you know close to it in the name i couldn't just call it steinway piano gallery it had to have a large city with it i figured that was what it was because yeah. you just said mayflower everybody been like what are you oh, talking yeah, about yeah and they, they don't really you, know where mayflower is it's up in new york yeah. it's a ship yeah from the 1600s <laughs> yeah and, and steinway piano gallery lr i mean nobody known that either. yeah Steinway Piano Gallery in Mayflower. So uh, you choose, you boast on your website, your gallery is acoustically designed for chamber music and recitals. Yes. What does that mean? All right. So when I was uh, designing the gallery and building it, uh, I talked with Jim McGee again, and he has always loved chamber music, and he's really uh, got me into loving chamber music and just the acoustics of the room for chamber music and how it, just the sound of, uh, of, chamber music rooms and i brought him in when i was building the building and just asked him to help me make this a little recital hall i thought it would be a pretty uh, well i just thought it'd be awesome to be able to have a showroom in a recital hall and have it for two purposes uh, to show pianos and showcase steinway in a beautiful recital hall and also to be able to have uh, chamber music in the hall so sun gray loves chamber music he has loved chamber music since he was 15 we would get we would get up in the mornings and there would be what was that kind of a monk ch chance some kind of monk i don't know if you call that chamber, chamber music what do you call that it's like sacred music but it's i do like, like chamber music a lot it's like tibetan monks chanting at the end of the hall <laughs> not quite the same not quite the same he was i remember like okay most kids have rock music playing at the end of the hall gray's down there ooh, Listening to the, the Ravel String Quartet. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But anyway. <laughs> Steve is also yeah. humble. I have wow. to add this in. Uh, one of the other reasons that we made it a chamber music hall, acoustically perfect, um, was because we wanted the local teachers to also have a place where they could bring their students and have recitals on the world's best piano uh, in a hall that sounded perfect. 
and it's free. Oh, it's free. It's absolutely free to every teacher. All they have to do is call us. Do they utilize it? Yes. We've had a few, yeah. Yes. A few? Yeah. Before the virus, it, you know. How it long has it been open? Uh, just a little over a year. Oh, so you were just now getting ready for a lot of recitals yes. this, yeah. this spring. We had quite a few yes. uh, scheduled. Had to cancel. Wow. Yeah. You know, performing is such an important part of learning music is 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 also learning to perform. It's a big deal. Yes. All right. This is a great place to take our second break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with the well-trained exclusive Steinway piano dealer, tuner, craftsman and artisan, Mr. Stephen Worges, with his business partner, Eric Cheshire from Infrared Studio Productions. Uh, and I want to remind everyone, we're broadcasting live every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Central Time on 101.1 The Answer and up in your business with Carrie McCoy's Facebook page. Although I think it's having problems because Facebook is overloaded right now with so many people on Facebook that it keeps having a problem doing live. But also, this we rebroadcast on Fridays. The show is aired on KABF 88.3 at 2 p.m. and a podcast is made available on all popular listening sites and YouTube channels. Welcome, I'm Carrie McCoy, owner of the one and only flagandbanner.com. Are you video conferencing at home? <coughs> flagandbanner.com has a home office backdrop for you. Choose between industrial chic, cozy den, or the bookworm, all in stock. Order online at theflagandbanner.com or come by the showroom, open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5.30, and Saturday, 10 to 4. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with piano expert Mr. Stephen Worges, founder of Stephen's Piano Shop and exclusive Steinway and S Steinway and Sons Piano Gallery in Mayflower, Arkansas. And we're here with his business partner, Eric Cheshire, Infrared Studio Productions. Um, for the break, we were talking about how Eric... Um, I'm sorry, how Stephen came to be a Steinway dealer. It's really interesting. You should go. If you didn't hear the beginning of the show, you, you should go and listen to it. So now we're going to talk more about what you and Eric do together. But before we do, do you sell very many player pianos? We do. Yes, ma'am. I love player pianos. We do, too. Yeah. I can sell you one. Do very many people <laughs> use play player pianos? They do. Um, yes, what Steinway has done uh, is they've come out with the Steinway Spirio, and that is uh, the finest player piano in the world because it's on the finest piano in the world. But not only that, it's just the engineering behind the player system that they have put on these Steinways. It's it's unreal. Literally, 50% of the production at Steinway in New York is Spirio pianos, which is their player piano. They sell that many yes, player pianos. It's well, you know, if you go to a hotel, they've got one oh, yeah. in the lobby, and it's just over there playing away. With and the, nobody. And the difference, I mean, the difference in the Spirio. Oh, go ahead. The biggest difference is if you can remember the old time player pianos with the roll that used to go around. Yeah. They played every note. It was a suction system. Kind of air would suck the keys down to make the hammers hit the strings, right? So as those holes were crossing over on that roll, it would trigger the suction inside the piano to suck certain keys down. And that was very cool. Very high tech for that time frame. Yeah. But the problem was. Even though you heard the song, it was usually all one level of volume. There was no expression in it. Um, today, Steinway is able to capture the world's greatest pianist, and it faithfully reproduces every single keystroke that they played, how they played it, how hard they played it, how long the note was held, was the pedal all the way down or only half. I mean, it's amazing. So when you hear a great artist that they've recorded in your living room. It is that artist playing that piano. It's that good. Is it digital? Are yes. they using any uh, computer generated? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's actually the piano playing. It's the piano the playing. playing. You sit there on your iPad and you go through the Spirio app and you, you pick out a Steinway artist. Every single recording is by a Steinway artist. So you have the finest pianist playing on the finest piano in the world on this amazing Spirio system that captures every single nuance. Of every, How much does every, one of those pianos cost? Well, the Spirio only adds about 20 grand to the piano. How much does the piano cost? Well, uh, 
Depends Typical, on which one. Yeah, depends on depends on the model. Depends what's a, the what's an average? Uh, Sixty thousand. So eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Do they really hold their there. value? Yes, ma'am. I've heard, I read that somewhere that when you buy one, you can sell it immediately for seventy five percent of seventy five percent of what you bought it for. But if yes. you hold it ten years, yes. Look, what are you going to say? Go ahead. The, there's, I, I, I sold my first piano when I was 12 years old. So I have literally traveled around the world and helped people, train people how to sell pianos. And I heard a lot of myths. And one of the myths that uh, some unscrupulous people will throw out to people is you should invest in this piano because it's going to go up in value. You can't lose. Well, there's a reality to that. There's a market reality. If you purchase a Steinway today, um, well, here's a great example. We sold a 1922 Steinway, right? That was probably purchased for around $3,000 in 1922. They're about, they're about 1800 and 1800 maybe. Yeah. And what, no, what was 1800? They cost the piano about 1800 when it was originally purchased. Yeah. Oh. And we sold it today, a 1922 Steinway for about $23,000. So what that's a I think if you put it in the stock market you'd have made more money. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> but, but you wouldn't have enjoyed it. You wouldn't have enjoyed it. Yeah. Steinways they do appreciate, but it, just like with any other product, you, you, you have to own it for a while. If you immediately buy one today, unless you got some crazy deal uh, and turn around tomorrow and try and sell it, the problem is there's new ones that are the same price. Do y'all know about that Steinway that was on the stage at Central High School? Yeah, I know a little bit about it. Did y'all refurbish that? We did not. Actually, oh, I bet uh, that breaks your heart. It kind of does. Yeah. <laughs> That's a sore stub. A sore stub. Is it? <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't done very many years ago. Yeah, uh, and I I haven't even inspected it or looked at it, so I'm really not even sure. You know how good a job they did. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Well, I was hoping you would say yes, you did that. Yeah. Um. So that so Mr. Steinway, he invented the first Steinway in his kitchen. Yeah. In the eighteen and upright, and upright yeah. in his in his kitchen. And over, I read, where over 10 years, he only made 460 of them or something. Sounds about right, actually. Yes. Before he moved to New York and started Steinway and Sons. Yeah. So, Son Gray, you had a Yamaha. What do y'all think about those? I will make this statement live on the air. Okay. I believe that everybody today makes a good piano. Uh, and I've said that my whole life. Um, Yamaha, Kawhi, Baldwin, which used to be built here, um, they all made good pianos. Um, but there's a difference mm -hmm. in a good piano and a great piano. And a Steinway is a great piano. Yeah. I agree with that. The biggest difference what is What makes in it the, so good? The design. The design, the design and, the, and the handcrafted. Yeah. Uh, the handcrafting of it. They do things that no one else does or cares to do. Steinway's motto is actually to build the best piano regardless of price. And most companies' mottos would be build as many pianos as we can that most people can afford. That's right. The Model yeah. T. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big difference. Um, it's different for every artist. If you ask five different Steinway artists, what is it about Steinway that you love? You would have five different answers. It's a very personal visceral connection that people have with the Steinway piano. Horowitz, the greatest piano player that ever lived, Who? would own, uh, uh, Horowitz, Vladimir Horowitz. Vladimir Horowitz was the greatest piano player that ever lived. And he would, this is back when they had prop planes, but he would only tour with his Steinway, not just any Steinway, his Steinway. And every time you watch the old film clips of him, every time he would walk out on stage before he played, he would walk down the piano and he would just reach out and pat it. And touch it like it was a long lost friend because it was it was part of him how could he do that they are 20 tons of strings yes but the piano tension. doesn't weigh 20 tons oh <laughs> yeah so, so it's 20 tons of string, string tension. tension yes ma'am so how much does a piano weigh they're very heavy how well, do you get a prop plane off the ground with a piano pounds, I'd say, yeah, a, a concert grand, grand yeah. uh 1300 13 1400 pounds so how was he getting these prop planes off the ground? He, he had planes come and bring sections of it, and they put it together at the place? Long runways is all I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and lightweight pilots. Yes. <laughs> so like two people get to be in the plane. That's, right. that's all we get. You to will have. sit on this side of the plane. <laughs> so yeah, I read where they have the pianos are so heavy they have to have a backbone to to to. Well, the, I guess it's not because they're so heavy. They have to have a backbone for the for the strength for the s- strength of the twenty. Tons of string tension. That's yeah. what the backbone's for. Yeah, I mean, I guess the backbone. Um, what would that really be called? Like it, the back posts. Yeah, the posts. The, uh, the, the cast iron plate yep. is often called the backbone. Yeah, the cast iron plate. Yeah, so the the cast iron plate does hold all of that tension, along with the cast iron being bolted down to hard rock maple, which is what Steinway does with their handcrafted pianos. Is they have a hard rock maple rim. And then they bolt the cast iron down to that hard rock maple rim. That's what holds the tension, 20 tons of tension. And that's a lot of tension. Yeah. I think I have that in my neck. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last break. We're going to take, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Mr. Stephen Worges, Steinway piano dealer, and his friend Eric Cheshire from the Infrared Studio Productions. We'll be right back. Short break. Welcome. I'm Carrie McCoy owner of the one and only flagandbanner.com. It's bunting season. Stuck inside with nothing to do? Transform your home from drab to fab by adding bunting, a flagpole, and garden banners. Let's celebrate the patriotic season safely together. Theflagandbanner.com, your patriotic display experts. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5.30 and Saturday, 10 to 4. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with piano expert, Mr. Steve Worges, founder of Stevens Piano Shop and Steinway Son, Steinway and Sons Piano Gallery in Mayflower, Arkansas, with his business partner, Eric Shesher, Infrared Studio Productions. We've been talking about Steinways. We've been talking about careers. My favorite part, probably the whole interview, was how Steven started as a free apprentice at Piano Craft. And then within 10 years, became the owner of the place. And then a few years later, started out on his own and then continued his education until he became a Steinway dealer that led somewhere that he could never have dreamed. Going where life leads you and taking opportunities. This is exactly what the entrepreneurial spirit is all about. So today at your businesses, you work with Eric Cheshire here at the Infrared Studios. What do y'all do together? That's a fun, that's a long story. Uh, we met Steve because in our original studio, which was down here, very, very, very close to where we are now, uh, it is very important in our full recording studio. We have a very large piano and it needs to be in perfect tune for every single session we have. There can be no mistakes. What kind of music do you record? We've recorded everything from country to rock and roll to jazz is a huge, huge part of our uh, recording. Rex Bell, uh, the owner of the studio. Uh, is one of the singular best piano players I've ever met in my life and is an extraordinary jazz pianist. And our house band are all very accomplished jazz players. Jazz players have this unique ability to play anything put in front of them. So I am very fortunate to have simply the best house band in the world uh, sitting in my studio. I haven't um, even heard of this. Yes. So I live right here and I didn't even and know about infrared So we had gone through productions several tuners that just couldn't get it done they ah. their ear wasn't good enough whatever they just weren't good enough and finally we got recommended steve and when i have to admit the first day he came in here's this young kid this is like 12 years ago now he's a young kid and i'm like who is this mm-hmm. kid you know there's no way he has enough experience to do this we've been through all the old guys that have all the experience and man he sat down and started tuning and i've been in the piano business my whole life and i knew immediately when he started tuning what we had. And Are you a piano player too? Yes, ma'am. Very good piano player. Yeah. I have a piano degree and also a vocal degree. And Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So do you make a living playing the piano or at your studio? Well, I make a living at the studio. Yeah. Which means I'm playing all day, every day. He uh, writes which music. Which is fantastic. I mean, he does, yeah. does it all. We opened the studio to be a safe place. I lived in Nashville for many, many, many years. And um, when I moved here, the goal was to have a studio here. Um, that was a safe place. And the, what do you mean by safe place? Usually if you live in little rock, for instance, or you live in who knows a small town somewhere in the middle of the USA, if you want to have some type of career in the music business, you have to eventually leave right? and go to New York or LA, uh, Chicago, maybe, um, we wanted to have a studio that offered 
everything that those places would offer and more and be right here where you can stay with the people that know you and actually care about you and yet we mm -hmm. can also develop you and get you ready stay um, with your tribe yes yeah. that that was our goal and so and you moved out to yes mayflower yes. from downtown little rock <laughs> what do your clients think about that well you know they I, love it yeah i yeah. i asked eric when uh when i started steinway piano gallery i said you have to do this with me you know you are yeah. like the, the piano guru and you have uh -huh. sold pianos and been all over the world selling pianos for 30 something years and <laughs> i'm old <laughs> you don't look it he's hot people. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. but I, I mean i just i really really wanted his help and needed his help and he said he would he would help me with it so he started uh he talked to rex about you know his schedule and being able to come out to the we had a, a warehouse at the time out by mayflower and uh for appointments only you know i could get eric to meet the customers there to talk to him about pianos and work with them and uh we got the gallery opened a year ago well actually is it a year ago a little yeah, over, a year. Little yeah. over a year ago and he's in and out of the gallery running from mayflower to north little rock from mayflower to north <laughs> what's little it rock. i thought you said it was in little rock what's in north little rock uh, that's where our studio is right, 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 right across the river okay yeah, yeah. Right yeah. across the river in downtown north little rock and he was running back and forth and <laughs> yeah. and rex the owner of uh infrared studio decided that you know he was going to change his location of his studio he was going to look out in west little rock or look out in maumelle and uh i started talking to eric about it i was like well why don't why don't look I just, in Mayflower. Why don't yeah. I just build a studio on the back of the gallery? We just yeah. finished building the gallery. We could go right back into construction mode yeah. and build a studio. And uh, talk synergy. To, yeah. It is. <laughs> talk to uh, talk to Rex about it, and he said, "All right, when do you start?" So I it took us about eight months to build the studio, yeah. and we built the studio out and moved it in in March and or February March, and then. Do you teach out there also? We don't. We don't teach, but we do know a lot of teachers. So, do you train? Do you have any apprentices that you're training? I do. That are going to uh, one up grade grow up and be your competitor? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that discussion. Yeah, we have. Many times. That's we okay. Have. That's yeah. what. That's what. That's what entrepreneurs do. They pay forward their knowledge. That's well, okay. I mean, my goal with uh, people that I've trained is for them to work with me and for me to make it worth mm -hmm. their while. And uh, yeah. so I have I have three people that I've uh, I've helped trained one of them and I've completely trained two of them. And uh well on your Facebook page it says that you are the best boss ever. Does it say that? Uh huh. You haven't yeah. been to your Facebook page, but one of your employees said he Steve is the best boss ever. <laughs> He's trying to buy I paid him. You paid him. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. You put that on there yourself, <laughs> didn't you? You know, yeah. that says a lot. Small businesses need to be great bosses and mentors to yeah. other people. To well, I love I love all the guys that work with me. I mean, they're awesome people. And uh I mean they would be the people that I would hang out with after work. You know, I, I mean, they're just awesome. I've been blessed. I mean, God has truly blessed my business big time. Do pianos wear out, grow old? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What do you do when a Steinway is 100 years old? You rebuild it. Do you have to take everything out and start over and then it's not a Steinway? You know, the best way to do it. I mean, you can't really get a Steinway. The, the soul of the piano is a Steinway soundboard. And you can take the shell of a Steinway and put just any old board in it. And it does not sound anything like a Steinway. So you literally have to go back to the factory in New York and to get that correct wood to go back in it. So what the best way to rebuild a Steinway is actually to send the case back to New York, let them do what we call the belly work, which is putting the soundboard in it, putting a new bridge in it and stuff like that, and then bring it back and put the action and stuff like that in it. Oh, well. Yeah, I heard the music, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we're at the end of the show. I want to thank you so much for coming on. And how do people learn more about your business and get in touch with y'all? All right. So our website is super easy. It's SteinwayLR.com. SteinwayLR.com. Oh, you got the LR. SteinwayLR.com. Thank y'all so much for being with us today. In closing, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with us. We hope you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the picture of Carrie's face in the center of the screen. For more of Carrie's interviews, click either video on the right of the screen. And as always, thank you for watching.